We're here today at the Marvel Gallery for the release of Kobe's new signature shoe, the Kobe AD. There are candles on the floor, there are sugar skulls on the walls, so the setting was perfect for me to ask him a couple of frank questions about life, death, and mythology. So, we are sitting on top of a Mesoamerican muralist painting of a clock. Yeah. I gotta ask, because I feel like the setting is begging for it, what's your relationship with death? A comfortable one. Yeah? It's a comfortable one. It's a it's an understanding. You can't have life without death, can't have life without the dark. Right? So it's an acceptance of that. When it came time to decide whether or not I should retire, that's really an acceptance mm -hmm. of that mortality that all athletes face. Right? And if you combat it, you'll have all of that inner struggle within yourself. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. And, uh, so it's, uh, I'm comfortable with it. I remember reading in the Wall Street Journal that you said that you'd been planning this phase for as early as three years back. So I wanted to know, what was the moment that made you decide to start planning for this? Well, the injury. When I injured my Achilles and it became something where it's okay, this is, this is immediate. The end of my career could be now. So since I was 21 years old and thinking, okay, I have to figure out what comes next, you kind of brainstorm, you ideate, but you never really execute anything. And when the injury happened, it was like, okay, no, I need to start building now, right? And mm -hmm. that's when the turning point was for me. Okay. What was that turning point feel like? If you have like something that's been a part of you for, two decades, it's kind of like a part of yourself dies, obviously, sure. we're sitting. Sure. Um, it's exciting. It's, it's exciting? It is exciting, because yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's the process of starting anew, mm -hmm. right? So when I'm sitting there and I have the Achilles injury, um, it's, it's one thing to sit there and try to black out the frustrations of being injured, because that's you're constantly tugging yeah. with that, right? As opposed to simply replacing that with a new challenge, mm -hmm. right? Something that gets you excited. So now you're not focused on not being depressed. You're focused on the excitement of building something new. And so uh, I, it was extremely exciting, man, having to figure something out and build it from the ground up. Well, you said in the earlier Q&A that you now no longer have to obsess over the Russell Westbrooks and Kawhi Leonard's of the world, but being that you used to get up at like 3 a.m. to shoot thousands of jump <laughs> shots, what do you obsess over now? Well, I, storytelling for me is, is the number one thing. It's writing, it's outlining, it's creating uh, narratives that can inspire the next generation of athletes. Right? What are those things? And, and you know, and not from uh, merely a documentary perspective, but from a fantasy perspective, from a mythology perspective. Right? What are those stories that we can use to? teach the next generation of athletes, not just about the sport, but teach them about life through sport. How do we make those connections? And so that's what I obsess over every single day. Mythology. Sure. What is your favorite type of mythology, Norse mythology? Well, Greek I grew mythology? up I grew up um, studying Greek mythology at a very early age, mm -hmm. which is, is kind of weird. I mean, I, you know, at the age of 10, um, in Italy, our class, we actually had to read the Iliad in Latin and be able to recite verses really? from the Iliad. You don't realize how strange that is at 10 until you come back to the States. And you're having to recite. And you're like, wait, nobody knows this? I, I, this I is strange. To speak about the Iliad in a dead language. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What was it? That's fine. Do you remember like any lines from it? Or well, no, absolutely not. Which was, it was like. <laughs> I mean, what like, in the world? Why? I mean, like, I thought I'd chance the question because, yeah, I mean, no, like... But the, the thing that I gravitated to was the, the difference between Achilles and Hector and the mm -hmm. different philosophies that they both embodied, right? Okay. And contrasting beliefs. And uh, who did I see myself more in, right? And even at that early age, I was like, okay, Achilles is more interesting. I think as a kid, Achilles is always more interesting because yeah. he's more aggressive. You right? see Troy, not, right? Yeah, Obviously. Well, of course. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's not bound to limitations of mm -hmm. um, of others perspective of him of he's down completely him. by results exactly okay and the execution of it right, right. so uh, those are very complex and complicated issues for a kid at 10 to start understanding of course 
Um, but I think the sooner we can teach our kids those type of lessons in a way that's easily digestible for them, maybe not teaching them not in Latin, detrimental. you know what I mean? <laughs> not teaching them in Latin, but in a way that's entertaining and fun for them to process, uh, it can be great. I have to ask this because I, I'm dying to know. What do you think happens after you die? I don't know. You know? No, I don't know, but I'll know when I die. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a question that you. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like it's to me. It's 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 it's, it's that simple. Okay. I don't know. We'll You'll see. Just see when you get there. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, Tom. You got it. Thank you for answering my questions. You got you it, man. Exceptionally strange. <laughs> <laughs> I know. How